Tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather, your host, and I'm 28 from the United Kingdom. This is my channel all about crochet and knitting and general, general, yarny goodness. I am losing my voice. Um, I've had this ongoing chesty cold thing for God knows how long. So my pronunciation just, it doesn't exist today. Sorry, um, but at least it makes me giggle. So, yarny goodness, lots of it. Today's vlog is all about magic. Um, the magic of knitting and just magic in life. Those little moments that you just think, wow. And so I'm wearing my Hogwarts jumper for the occasion. Um, I don't know if I've said it, so I'll say it again. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and spending this time with me. And if you are brand new, hi, hello and welcome. Um, there are so many more of us now, like the tribe's getting so much bigger. So I just want to thank you all for liking my videos, subscribing and just sharing them because we are growing and it is amazing. Um, yeah, more giveaways. The closer we get to like the thousand milestone, the more I think there's going to be another giveaway. Ugh. Okay, so magic. I... Um, I am religious, I do believe in God and I'm also very spiritual and I always have been um, and I'm very em empathetic, I can't even, I can't even say the words to say today, I can't word today, I'm a very sensitive person, I'm very empathetic, I am just, yeah, and magic is something that just keeps really popping up at the moment. So I just wanted to bring a little vlog on that to you today. Um, I am going to start with, as I'm not wearing anything yarny, though I'm sure you appreciate my Harry Potter jumper, I am going to go straight into, and again, no finished objects, I'm going to go straight into whips. So, yeah boy, this is a sock, the start of a sock. I am back on the sock hype. Um, I taught myself to knit a couple of years ago and the first thing I knit was a pair of two at a time, two at a time, toe up socks with contrasting cuffs, toes and heels. My oh my, I had to concentrate to get those words out. Um, and I absolutely loved it. So much fun and it was really big challenge as a first knitted project um, and from there I've knitted a few pairs of socks um, and it's funny really because I enjoy them so much yet I haven't really put much time into them and as at the end of September start of October I've had like a frenzy of finishing items um, and I will link to the vlog above where I show them all off. I had like four, almost five finished objects in one video. Doesn't happen guys. So because I'd finished so much, all of a sudden I didn't really have any projects I was working on. Um, so my current whips are the granny square jumper, um, then a jumper that I'm working on designing myself with some yarn from Rito Yarn. Thank you Rito. And yeah, then I'm just working through my stash, trying to stash bust and create items that I need for my me made wardrobe. Um, and one thing that I thought once I'd got rid of a load of my languishing ongoing whips is I'd love to start another pair of socks. So I have, um, these are magic, magic loop socks. They're quite a long cable because normally I do mine two at a time, but I decided this time that I'm just going to take my time and enjoy every moment of it and do one sock. And usually I do toe up because I do not like kitchen and toes. I say that, I've never done one, but I don't like the thought of kitcheting a toe. Ah, but there's so many great projects out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so many great patterns out there, should I say, 
and they are cuff down and so by me saying right I am not doing a cuff down sock I was really limiting myself and basically cutting myself off from the magic that is socks um, and so I just decided right it's big girl panty times it's time to just do this um, so I cast these socks this sock on the yarn that I'm using is this amazing glitter can you see the oh you can see the glitter it's the colorway I think is marigold and it's on Stellina it's sock yarn and it's from homespun wonders and I brought this absolutely ages ago with the intention of making a pair of socks for Beauty and the Beast and it's when the Beauty and the Beast film 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 <laughs> came out with Hermione Granger as Belle, Emma Watson as Belle, um, and I was gonna make a pair of Beauty and the Beast socks, and it was just a little bit beyond what I was capable of, uh, capable? <laughs> oh dear, my poor voice. It's a little bit beyond what I was capable of at the time, and so this yarn kind of I started another pattern pair of socks and again I tried to make a single sock into a two at a time pattern and I was getting a bit confused, I hadn't really done textured socks and long story short I frogged that and then I started another pattern, I was going to make my own and I wasn't really enjoying it and I just thought I just want to get back into socks, I'm going to follow a pattern that's already out there so that I can just enjoy them. Um, so I cast these on last night guys, last night, and I already have the cuff and I'm part way through my second repeat for the leg out of nine. Um, I'm using 2.5mm needles, it does call for 225 on the pattern but I don't have any. Um, this is the smallest that I've got so maybe when I next on order online or go anywhere I might invest in a 2.25 pair um, so it's probably slightly bigger than it should be um, I'm gonna just knit uh, another chunk of the leg try it on again and see how it how it fits if it is too big then I, I could gift them or I could rip them back I'm I'm not sure yet I'm not fussed either way um, and the stitch marker I'm using says dream. Is it gonna show up? It's one I made myself. It doesn't help that I've got the shakes. And it's just a little plaque that says dream, which I think just goes really well with my whole little magical theme I've got going on. Um, and the pattern, the pattern which is very important, is the Dotty Socks by Emma of Potter and Bloom. I always want to say Plotter and Boom. That's not your name. It's Potter and Bloom. So yes, it's just her free pattern. It's just one size for, for women, one size for men and a kid's size. Um, if this is too big, then I might try the kid's size but on a slightly larger needle and see if that, because I've got really small feet. I'm only a size four. So I could do the largest child size on a bigger needle and probably come up all right. So that's another option. Um, and I think as well, once I've done this sock and its partner, I could probably do this pattern two at a time. We'll see what the heel's like, but I could probably do it two at a time, no problem. But I'm really enjoying just having the one on the needle and not having too much to think about. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I've, it really held me back from making socks is that in my head it's more practical and time efficient to make two at a time but there isn't that many two at a time socks patterns out there that I really want to make and so the last pair of socks that I made would be maybe around March time I was knitting on a pair whilst I was at Edinburgh Yarn Festival 
but they never got the heel, no, they put the heel in and I didn't like the heel. So they never got finished. So the pair previous to that that I completed would have been my January blue socks back in January. We're now in October and I haven't been working on socks because I wanted to do it in a more time efficient way. Like that doesn't make any sense because even if I'd have done two slow socks per month, I still have more than what, I, what I've done, which is nothing because I was trying to be efficient. Like, I really think my relationship with time has changed a lot in the last few months and I might have to do a vlog on that and how I am more, not productive, but how I am more mindful with my time and so how I put it to the things that I really want to do and how I don't feel as hurried and as rushed and I do feel more productive for it. So that's probably a whole other vlog. But I've started this sock. And also I've missed sock knitting because, for example, I was just on hold to the doctors. And I put in a whole repeat on the leg. And it's just something you can just pick up and just do a bit of. Fair enough, the heel requires a bit more thinking. But you can always just take a chunk of like a little chunk of time and do your heel and then carry on so my sock has started and um, because I frogged the start of a toe the yarn was a little bit wrinkly like like this when I am um, cast on so they're definitely going to need blocking so the pattern isn't coming through as well as it could have because of the crinkles but honestly it does look really really good and i really like the color and that's going to look really nice because my winter boots are black just to see the little bit of this peep that's going to be a really nice pop of color um and i think in my past vlogs i've been seeing how i want my clothing to be a bit more neutral but i've always always been a sucker for socks and i've always had bright bright socks and so this just keeps me happy and you know all of the minis that i got from edinburgh yarn festival originally they were going to be for a blanket and i've since said i don't need any more blankets like in this room in my lounge slash studio right now there are 10 blankets seven of which i've crocheted i don't need any more blankets there is a crochet blanket on my bed which was my granddad's um and out of them all that's the one I love the most and that's the one that I now sleep with so don't need more blankets and if I was to use really really nice expensive like merino blend wool in all these great amazing colours for a blanket I couldn't put it on my bed because Darcy who is asleep in his bed right now I don't want to wake up puts his bum on everything that I crochet, everything. Like I have to take my granddad's blanket and put it out of the way in the corner, propped up on pillows where he can't get it or in my wardrobe because he will try and make a den in it, which is kind of fine, but it makes it furry, which I'm not that keen on. And I have to be careful he doesn't get his claws caught up in the trebles. So, because if, if granddad's blanket was to get harmed, I'd be really gutted. Um, and I, I can see that it's probably going to need a little bit of repairing in its lifetime because when he was in the care home, the care home put it through industrial washers and dryers. Yeah, so it's super soft, but you can tell it's been washed a lot. So anyway, all of those, all of those minis, I think I'm just going to put into socks. Um, and I only need 50 grams for a pair of socks. I've got loads of sock design ideas in my head. Um, but I think for me, one of the things holding me back was that I hadn't really found a heel that I enjoy using. So I'm just going to do a few other people's patterns, paid for and free, and just try out a load of different heels and fit and see what I like. Um, and then I've got ideas. I want to make a pair of Dobby socks, Harry Potter Dobby socks. Um, I'm currently reading, rereading Harry Potter at the moment. I'm on book four, um, Goblet of Fire, and there's a description of Dobby's socks when he's in the um, K 
kitchen at Hogwarts and I haven't checked, I'm sure somebody else has made them but I want to make my own version of Dobby socks and I love that they're odd socks because um, growing up I always wore odd socks and quite often now I wear odd socks because I've got that many with amazing like slogans and patterns that I want to mix them up so that you get to see a lot of them. There's only seven days in the week, you know, I've, I've got a lot of socks. So I love that his socks are odd as well. So I want to make some Dobby socks. I want to do like a faded pair because I've got so many minis. I want to do like a find your fade type sock. Um, there's the fluorite pattern which is in one of my pom-pom magazines. Um, I could do that. Um, and then Emma from Potter and Bloom's got a few patterns out there. Sandra from Cherry Heart. Um, Danny from Little Bobbins. There's so many amazing, amazing knitted sock patterns. And I really was limiting myself by only wanting to do two at a time um, and toe up. And I just think that it's time to just set that aside and just enjoy the magic of making socks. I love that I cast this on on one needle and now I have a tube that's creating a cuff for a sock. Now you know what, it's that big that it could be a cuff for a sleeve, so I'm definitely gonna have to check my sizing. Look at that. Though I don't have really skinny ankles, so maybe it'd be all right. Oh my goodness, I love it. I don't, the thought of knitting a jumper in four ply, gosh sleeves imagine the sleeves but anyway <clears throat> so yeah I'm just finding that really soothing Um, I'm finding a lot of joy in it I'm really really enjoying it just putting a few stitches on they're itty bitty tiny stitches but honestly it does grow so quick which is also the magic of sock knitting because you do look at it and you think that is going to take forever and it really doesn't if you just put five to ten minutes here and there with it honestly it grows like five minutes whilst I was on hold five minutes whilst I'm waiting for like the um bath to run anything like that and before you know it it's really growing so I yeah I'm I'm really enjoying them can you tell um so if anybody knows of any free sock patterns that you can recommend to me, then let me know. I know everybody's done the Hermione's Everyday Sock and I've got to do a pair, got to. Um, and I'd like to get some sort of Harry Potter yarn for that as well. But for now, I'm just going to use what I've got. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to do a pair of those. And then again, a didn't do them because I believe they're cuffed down now one at a time and that's what put me off but no longer no more open myself up to all sorts of magic now as I was saying this is the Emma of Potter and Bloom's pattern and I am a patreon to her um I'm a patron to her patreon and every week she posts well I think every week she does a weekly whispers which is sort of like a guidance for your week using the tarot cards and then she does like a monthly overview like a love letter which I just really really like it um I obviously found her because of crochet and knitting and she's an amazing designer and then um when she started posting more on living magically I was really really intrigued I've had quite a few tarot readings um, and I do really like set a lot of store in um, star signs and the moon phases and all that sort of thing and it's something that I am learning a lot more about. Um, I still, for me there is a slight conflict because I believe in a God, I believe in a, a higher being and I, I kind of a little bit when people come out with um, like magic and spells I'm a little bit like I don't want to upset my god but it's not like I'm chanting around a campfire casting spells and if you want to do that there's nothing wrong with that I am just really interested in the universe and how it sort of has an impact not in a bad way impact sounds harmful but how it 
it shapes our day-to-day -day lives. So yeah, um, I'm on her Patreon, it's absolutely great. Go check hers out, check mine out while you're at it. <laughs> and I have always, when I had my blog, I was always posting like encouragement and affirmations and I do that on my Instagram as well. And so I've started on my Patreon, um, my Monday meditation. And what that is, is I just post um, every Sunday night, I post for the week coming up to start on the Monday, some affirmations to say to yourself whilst you are doing some meditative knitting or crochet. So whilst I'm knitting on this, I will repeat my um, my meditations, my affirmations. Um, and I do find that they're really, really powerful and that it can really help me out when I'm in a little bit of a negative mindset. Um, I listen to a lot of affirmations on Spotify. I don't know if anybody's on there, but I've got quite a few playlists. Um, I quite often go to sleep with affirmations playing and sort of like zen music. Um, I just find that I, because I'm such a light sleeper, I am 100% sure that I hear a lot of it. And also that um, because I'm a light sleeper, it just helps to keep me asleep and restful rather than waking up and feeling like I was awake all night because my dreams have been so vivid. Um, so yes, affirmations are great and there's a lot more of that over on my Patreon. And I am thinking of recording a um, like a, a monthly affirmation track that you can use. Um, so I'll probably link it for the patrons. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if anybody would be interested. I'm always told that my voice, when I'm not croaky like this, is really soothing. And so I kind of have the idea that um, I will either weekly or monthly, I don't know, or maybe at the end of the month having posted them all, I will record them so that whilst you're sitting there and doing a little bit of um, me time knitting or crochet, you can listen to them. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I might just give it a go anyway because I really wanted some of my own affirmations recorded, so then I'll just let you lot have access to them. Um, and if you want any themes for affirmations, then let me know because I'm happy to accommodate. But yeah, that's something, so that's a little bit magical, isn't it? Um, some people poo-poo at that sort of stuff, but having given it a go myself, it makes a big difference. If I'm feeling anxious, if I sit for five or ten minutes with my knitting or my crochet and just sort of repeat these affirmations to myself, and what I'll do is I'll just try and, I will hold the problem I've got, I'll be aware of it in my mind and I will focus on my knitting and the affirmations and quite often I will come up with a solution to whatever problem I've been like worrying about, whatever's been bothering me. And it's also the same when I walk Darcy, sometimes I'll just play affirmations and then I just walk and look around. I live in a really nice area that's quite surrounded by green areas so I can just walk through the fields drop some HDDC patch of happy squares and I can listen to the affirmations and I just find it really grounding and to me that is magical so that's something I really want to do let me know what you think feel a little bit weird bearing myself like this but there we go and then the other magical thing I wanted to bring to you, again, this is Emma from Potter and Bloom's input ages ago. I don't even know how long ago. She podcasted about books that she was reading. It was such a long time ago and I put it on my to-do, like, on, on an Amazon list. I've got four or five of them. So it was going to take me a while to get to it. Um, and one of the words that I use repeatedly is light. So I always say that I choose light. I choose faith and hope and light over darkness and fear and negativity. Um, and I use light quite a lot when I am trying to calm myself after anxiety or during anxiety. I will use, because I'm very visual, I will use like the thought of a white light healing me or calming me down or protecting me and I find that so so comforting 
and that's a bit magical because there I am sort of imagining this healing light and then I feel a loads loads better and one of the books that Emma said was called light is the new black um, and because in the last few months I've really used the word light a lot it's just something I really wanted to read upon whatever's going on in my life I love to read about so I am a, I am quite quite the Hermione Granger if there's something that I'm intrigued in I will have a pin and pin interest board about it it will be in my journals and I will start to read and research a lot about it so um, I bought this book and I read it a few months back so it's light is the new black by Rebecca Campbell and it's all about follow what lights you up and your light up the world um, and it just basically says it's a guidebook for women who um, want to be the bright lights in the world, the modern day light workers. And it's all about guiding yourself to the callings of your soul. Um, and it was such a great book, honestly, it was so good. Um, because I haven't read in a long, long time, and I think I covered this in one of my other vlogs, I wasn't really finding books that I was really interested in, which is silly because I know what I want to be reading. I want to be reading business and self-development. I just wasn't giving myself those books and so I wasn't really reading. And Harry Potter, lots of Harry Potter. There's quite a lot of um, young adult dystopian. I've always been into fantasy and sci-fi, so there's always gonna be a lot of that. But I bought this book um, and I hadn't read in a long time. And this was a really good book to get into because of the way the pages are set up. So like it has a quote, like this one. She left the old story behind her and stepped into a new one, one into a new once upon a time. And then it will have like a page of writing. But then for example, on the next page it's got another quote. her inner light always called her home and then a little bit more writing so because it was quite um broken down in that way it was a really good book to get into and to read it wasn't too chunky or too heavy it was really light <laughs> um and it had some really good like parts that I really resonated with um and it's got loads of journal prompts in it, so I love to journal. Um, anybody that's watched from day one, I have so many journals. Um, and it's got like prompts in here. So this one's called Answer the Ache, and it just says, and I've just opened this at random. We each have within, within us an aching that is craving to be met. It's not a physical ache and it isn't a mental one. It's much deeper than either of those. Um, and it basically says, we came into this life with it, and if it's not tended to, it will be right there when we die. It drives our deepest desires, our best decisions, and our worst. It's lying beside us when we wake up in the night and while we make a cup of tea. It's there through the highs and all of the lows. The ache is your soul calling, and no matter what you do to ignore it, and numb it out, or die it down, it will never go away. Until we take the time to invite it to sit down and share with us, we will always feel a little uncomfortable, a touch of kilter, like something isn't quite right. Answer the ache. Um, and then it's got prompts at the bottom saying work your light and the questions are, what is your soul aching for? What is your soul trying to tell you? And what small thing can you do to answer that ache today? Wow. This had so many thought provoking like work your light questions it's got affirmations in here the quotes are amazing um they really really like just wow i think the day i got this i randomly opened it onto a page that was just like wow i need to hear that so i really recommend that book i really recommend the journal prompts i now that i've read it I am now, um, every other day or whenever I feel like it, I am just working through the journal prompts in my journal. Um, and this is an amazing addition to my self-development um, shelf. So, and then one other book I've been reading, it's called The Measurement of Souls. 
by A Mind's Diary by Nikita Merva. And she's actually a Leicestershire author. And that is a little bit like, um, what's it called? Oh, it's upstairs. Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. Um, it's little snippets of, well, in her own words. Um, this whole project started as something to help me vent and just for, as a form of self-expression. I gradually realised I gradually realised throughout that it could be something so much more. I want to help save the world, not take it over or impose my regime over it. I want to reach out to souls. I want my name on my own book and I want to have an effect, even if that may be the slightest, on another who may need a bit of reassurance that confusion in growing as a person is not uncommon. It had some real light bulb moments in there for me. Um, one of them being where it says... I used to wish everyone thought the same as me, but I've realised that that wouldn't teach me anything or do me any good. Sometimes I wish brief gestures would be returned and I'd feel as special as I do receiving as I did when I gave, just for a moment. I wish someone would put as much energy into me as I did them, but that's just not how life works. Some of these moments I read and I was like, you understand me. <laughs> this is why I love books. So that's some of the books that I've been getting little magical moments from. Um, I've just been really working on me, who I am, and what I need for myself. And those books have been really good for that. And my socks, and socks have been amazing. So that's my little vlog on the magical moments in my life at the moment. A little bit different to what I normally do, but I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, I will be back next week with a normal vlog all about all of my whips and everything going on. So until then, I will see you soon. Happy making tribe.